beautiful people and welcome to another webisode of Conversations with Kiera. We have made it to week two, you guys. I know things have been super crazy. Um, it's meant a lot going on, a lot going around, just a lot. So I totally understand. Um, I was going to record yesterday, but I... I was feeling really under the weather yesterday. So if you were looking for me yesterday, I do apologize. Um, but like I said in the first video anyway, I was gonna try to record on Saturdays and then have it posted by um, tomorrow. But um, yesterday I was really, I really wanted to record, but I just, I just couldn't, I just didn't feel well. So I took the rest of the day to rest and I feel a lot better. So I'm able to do this today. Um, I'm so blessed to have you a part. If this is your first time, welcome to Conversations with Kiera. I'm so blessed to have you a part. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well as hit the post notification bell so that way you are alerted every time I post new content. Okay, um, so um, last week was a introduction video. It's where I just introduced myself as well as the channel. Um, so if you didn't get a chance to watch that, it's still up there. I'm not going to take it down or anything. Um, so you are more than welcome to go and watch that video. Actually, I suggest it um, because I, I want you to be comfortable with me and the channel. And I just want you to feel comfortable. Um, so like I stated in the last video, I will be beginning to tell my story um, in, in, this, in this video um, as well as future videos. So um, I will begin with that today. But before I begin with the actual topic of the day, which will be my parents' divorce and how it shaped my life, um, I wanted to kind to kind of touch on the, um, um, the COVID-19. I'm sorry, I couldn't get my words out at first. Um, I just wanted to touch on that for a second. Um, I'm not going to go into like what I think it is or my whole beliefs or what I think it is. I'm not going to do that. But I do know that there are a lot of people afraid. There are a lot of people, you know, don't know what to think about it. Um, it's a lot of people that are just really living their lives in fear right now. And right now, I just want to encourage you, if you are afraid, um, don't be afraid. It's, it's, it is scary, but we can't live our lives in fear, y'all. Um, the best thing to do is to try to educate yourself about it. Um, pray about it, most definitely pray about it, um, and continue to take the proper precautions and also try not to look at it all in a negative way, okay? And what I mean by that is um, take out this time to really enjoy your family, enjoy your friends, the people that you really care about the most, um, because this is a, this is a, it's, it's, it's tragic, you know, it's a lot of people leaving here. Um, you know, we see the the death rate going up every day um, from this virus and it's, it's a lot, it can become overwhelming. But I do wanna kind of give you, you know, a positive view on it. You know, right now you can take out the time to really enjoy your family and friends and the people that you care about the most. Um, and just really, just take out this time to, to be present. I know there are still some jobs that are requiring their employees to work. If that is you, if that is the case for you, um, definitely take the proper precautions. Make sure that you're washing your hands, keeping your hands out of your face, out of your mouth, um, and just try to keep yourself healthy as much as possible. Take vitamins and, um, you know, just anything to build your immune system right now. Um, so um, that is my whole spill on that for the day. Um, I just wanted to kind of give you all some encouragement there because I know it's a lot of people out there scared. So I, I just wanted to give you that little piece of encouragement um, to kind of help, you know, with your thoughts. And um, guys, I can't stress enough prayer. Um, prayer, it works. So I, you know, if you don't have a prayer life with God, it's not too late to establish one, um, you can definitely do it. Um, it's no time or it's no time limit. He doesn't have a deadline when you can come to him or anything like that. Um, but I do encourage that the most. Um, so 
Uh, okay, so today I'm going to go ahead and get into um, what we're really here on this channel about, and that's my life story. Um, I was going to do it in one long video, but I just decided to break it up into parts. So today I will only be talking about my parents' divorce and how that shaped my life. Um, so I'm just going to get straight into it. Um, for those of you that don't know, my parents did get divorced when I was very young. I think I was about six or seven years old. Um, and the divorce shaped my life in such a major way. Um, I didn't, my parents didn't really sit down and talk to me about what was going on or what was happening. So it was kind of like I went from this happy family to a broken family. Um, and I didn't really understand. I didn't really know what was going on, but I wasn't like stupid to it. You know, like kids know, like kids can sense when it's something going on. Like, of course I could feel that it was something in the atmosphere, but I didn't know exactly what it was. Um, so later I found out that my father was cheating on my mom and she was not having it. She just divorced my father. Um, and we moved into our own apartment. Um, and I remember a lot of nights crying. I remember a lot of nights trying to talk to my parents about what was going on. Why was this happening? And nobody ever really stopped to just talk to me. And because of that, I began to get very quiet. Um, I really didn't know how to express myself. I didn't know, um, I just I just didn't know how to feel about anything. Um, I, I, I didn't feel like I could trust anyone. So I just, I would just get very quiet um, because I felt like my feelings didn't matter. I felt like I didn't have an opinion because I was a child. So, and because I didn't want to hurt my parents, and tell them that this, what they did was hurting me, I couldn't, I couldn't express that to them because I felt like if I tell them this, I'm gonna hurt my parents. Like, I can't hurt my parents. So I began to carry a weight. I'm sorry, y'all, it's kind of hard to talk about. But I began to like carry a weight that I didn't have to carry. Um, and um, it just, it, it, it even affected me in my adult life because as an adult, even now sometimes, I'm not gonna lie y'all, I'm not perfect. Like, I have a hard time expressing myself. <laughs> like, I'll like write, cause I, like if someone were to talk to my dad, um, he will tell you, like, instead of me asking my dad for something or saying, dad, hey, I need this, or um, dad, what's your advice on this? Instead of me doing that, I'll write out a text message or write a letter before I can express to him how I really feel. Now, my mom, on the other hand, is a little bit different. I think I'm a little bit too outspoken sometimes when it comes to her. So sometimes I say stuff and she'll be like, well, you hurt my feelings. And then in the back of my mind, it's like, well, you did all this to me when I was a kid. So I don't really care how you feel. And I've had to pray about that because I don't like that. I don't want to carry that, that kind of heart. I don't want to have that kind of heart when it comes to my mother or anyone. So I've, I've had to pray about that and I've really just had to ask God to change me from the inside out, change my heart, change my mind, the way that I think about people and things and situations. Um, so I did notice in my adult life now, um, rejection is a trigger for me. Like if I feel like I'm rejected in any kind of way, like whether it's something dealing with school or a relationship or anything, if I feel like I'm rejected, that is a major trigger for me and it bothers me it gets me to almost like I'm a totally different person. Um, 
because that's a trigger. It's like, if you reject me or if you ignore me or if I feel like you've hurt me in any kind of way, I'm instantly triggered. And it turns me into like a person that I don't even recognize all the time. So in saying all this, I had to really forgive my parents. I had to let go of that because it was too much of a weight. And anybody that has a child um, that's going through any kind of separation or divorce, please y'all talk to your kids. Ask them how they feel because it matters. It will make a huge difference, I'm telling you, because I didn't have it. So it was almost like I was trying to find my own way. I was trying to please both of my parents. I didn't know where I wanted to live and I was kind of forced with the with the responsibility or I, they gave me the option to um, decide who I wanted to live with. And I never knew. So it was almost like, okay, whichever parent I feel like I'm going to hurt the most, that's the parent that I'm going to go live with because I don't want to hurt them. So most of the time, I, I knew, you know, my mom's feelings going to be hurt so much. So instead of me living with my dad, I would always go live with my mom because I, I, I knew that my dad was a man. You know, he can probably, you know, he can probably get through it a little bit better than my mom could. So I would go live with my mom. And then I felt like I had to protect my mom because she had so much other stuff going on. And so I just, I felt that need to do that. But y'all... Those of you that have kids, if you're going through any kind of separation or divorce, I can't stress talking enough. That's the problem right now. We don't talk enough. We're too busy hiding behind this other stuff. We're distracted by other things. And it's people out here hurting. Every decision that you make in your life doesn't just affect you, but it affects everybody around you. And that's whether you have kids or not. I can't stress that enough. I can't. I can't stress that enough. Everything that you do has an outcome. And it's not going to just affect you. But everybody around you. I'm not against. Um, I'm not going to tell you to stay in a marriage that's toxic or that's damaging to you. Um, but I will say this. One thing that I have learned, I've never been married, but I've, I asked God about this a few years ago because I was really curious. And sometimes I just talk out loud to God. And I said, God, why, why is it that people get into these marriages and, and they just fail? Why is the divorce rate so high? Um, and, one, and one of the thoughts that came to my mind is, we simply don't spend enough time being single. We don't spend enough time being by ourselves because we're trying to fill these voids that we have that only God can fill. We're out here looking for somebody else or something else to make us feel better about what's really going on when you can't, you can't rely on someone else to make you happy. You can't rely on someone else to make you feel whole. That's one of the reasons why I'm single. And I'm, that's a whole nother episode. But I had to realize, hey, look, you're not ready to be with nobody. You would really damage another person. I'm not saying that I'm a bad person or anything like that. But I know I'm aware that I'm not fully healed from a lot of things. So in saying all of that, you have to really just ask God to heal you. To make you whole into the person that he has called you to be. Singleness is not, it's it's not um, a bad thing. People see it as such a, such a bad thing. And social media has a really, um, they they make it seem really just, just like bad. And it's not. It's really actually a gift that we don't even realize. But a lot of people never even get the chance to experience the gift because we're too busy running after every little girl or every boy we see you know and it's not not girl or boy i meant man or woman i'm sorry y'all but it's 
I, I just don't I just don't understand. I, I, I want us to get that, y'all. I really do. Singleness is a gift. You can become closer to God. You can do things that you that you've always wanted to do. Um, you can go after your dreams, your goals. You don't have to worry about any extra responsibility but yourself. And it's such a gift. Now, some days, it, you know, you have your hard days. Of course, when you see everybody booed up on Valentine's Day. And of course, yeah, but take yourself out on a date. Like, that's what I'm, that's where I am in my life. Like, we can't go anywhere right now, but I've decided to like once a month or twice a month, go take myself out somewhere or go do something nice for myself, buy something for myself. Um... We just need to get more into that. But um, like I said earlier, guys, I just like talk to your kids about divorce. Talk to them about what it is. Let them know mainly that it's not their fault. It's not anything that they could have, you know, that they could have done um, to make them feel like they don't matter. You know, you just want your kids to be healthy. And there are healthy ways to co-parent. Um, so and. Even in that, in the co-parenting sense, parents, get your feelings out of it. Get your feelings out of it. I understand, yeah, you may be hurt. You may not understand a lot, but you have got to get your feelings out of it because there are children or a child, an innocent child or children that are involved. And it's about them and creating a healthy life for them. I'm not saying that you don't matter, but in that, I just, you know, I even pray for parents, you know, that God will heal those wounds and heal that disappointment from it not working. Because I, I can only imagine you being in something and then you created another life and it's not working. So it's like you're disappointed in yourself as a parent and then you're disappointed in yourself because it didn't work. You're just really disappointed all around. And I can only imagine, um, but I just want to stress and say, you know, everyone matters um, when it comes to divorce. Everybody matters. Everybody has different feelings when it comes to it. Um, but I just wanted to um, really just emphasize those points, um, you know, and I just pray that that if that is your situation, that you and the mother or you or the father of the child can come together and put your differences aside for the child because in the end, that's all that matters. Um, and I also pray that, you know, you all are mended and healed from the disappointment and the pain that you cause each other from not knowing. We all make mistakes, so don't beat yourself up about it. Um, just continue to move forward um, and know that God has a major plan. You know, and just try to do things a little bit differently next time, like spending more time with yourself and embracing your, your singleness. Um, so that that is a singleness is a wonderful thing. So um, I'm not against it at all. Um, I want more young people to spend more time being single because all we really know is <laughs> like social media and what everyone else is doing. Um, but it's it's really important to just sometimes take a break from that and really just um, ask God what your purpose is, where he needs you at the time. Um, and like I said, you know, divorce, it, it does. It, it affects everyone differently. Um, but I hope that my story um, and my experience with divorce helps you and helps your family. Um, if you're parents, um, I, 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 I hope that it helps you as a parent to see it from a child's perspective um, because it can get very rough. So I can't stress enough to talk to your children, see how they really feel because it, it matters and it will make a t it'll make a total difference. I'm telling you, um, I think if my parents could have gone back and done things differently, they would, but we can't change it. So um if you are one of the children that have been affected by it, like myself, um, really ask God to give you the forgiveness to be able to forgive your parents and move on and just hope that 
your relationship with them as adults will be better than it was when you were a child. Um, so guys, that is my spill on divorce. Um, that is parts, you know, of my story. Next week, I will be talking about um, my battle with nephrotic syndrome and what it is. And that video may be a little bit longer than this one, um, but who knows? We'll we'll see. Um, but I just hope that you all will continue to take the proper precautions with this COVID-19. Um, take everything that I said today into consideration. Please don't take offense to any of the points that I may have made. I'm not here to hurt anyone. I'm here to help. Um, I'm just here to share my experience with you all. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this webisode. If you have any suggestions um, of, of future webisodes, um, uh, please feel free. If you have my number, you can text them to me um, or you can inbox me on Facebook. Um, Kiera Sanders is my name on Facebook. You can definitely look me up and um, you can inbox me. Please don't inbox me anything inappropriate because I will not read it. Um, if you do see me on social media, I will probably only be promoting my videos. Um, I'm currently not on social media right now. I'm taking a break from social media, um, but I will be checking my inbox only and posting about my webisodes. Um, but you guys, I hope that you guys continue to be safe out here. Um, continue to take the proper precautions. Y'all, please wash y'all hands. Please wash your hands. It's not, it's just 20 seconds. Just wash your hands, please, because y'all got germs and stuff. And see, I just need y'all to wash your hands. So just, just wash your hands. Keep your hands out your mouth. Keep an eye on your children. Um, make sure that they're not putting things in their mouths. Kind of try to disinfect their toys. And y'all know what to do. So I just hope that everyone is safe. Continue to keep praying. I love you. I will see you next week. Um, and I hope you all just have a wonderful rest of your day and have a lovely week as well. God bless you.